Well, hello and welcome to the session of ExecuNet Masterclass. I'm your host as always, Tony Lajos, and my guest this hour is Scott Schutz. Scott's a brilliant author and speaker and the head of mindfulness and compassion programs at LinkedIn. Did you know that individuals who are more compassionate are actually more successful at work? Today, Scott will talk to us about how the demonstration and experience of compassion at work is consequential and strategically advantageous, both for people and for organizations. Really important stuff and a part of our daily commitment here at Executive to connect with trusted voices, people like Scott, who can show you how to pivot to your best career and best work and have the life you want. Well, I am really happy to introduce to get today's guest. Scott Shute previously was the Vice President of LinkedIn's Customer Operations Group. In his current role as Head of Mindfulness and Compassion, he blends his lifelong practice and passion with his practical leadership and operations experience. Scott is the author of the brilliant new book, The Full Body Yes. It was just released. You should all go check it out, please. His mission is to change work from the inside out by mainstreaming mindfulness and operationalizing compassion. With that brief intro, welcome, Scott, to the second stage. They are all yours. Excellent. Thank you, Tony. And hello, everybody. And thanks for being here today. It's really an honor to be with you. And even though we're separated by this technology, we can be here together, right? And so my invitation to you is to be present, is to be really here. There's so many meetings that I go to where I'm not present. Maybe it's uh, I'm consuming, I'm stretching in the back, or I'm <laughs> you know, shopping on Amazon. But to really connect, we'd be here. And, and today we're talking about presence. So we're talking about how compassion is a strategic advantage. And a part of my job is to operationalize compassion. In fact, I wanted to write a book about how to be compassionate. And what I realized is 99.9% .9 of our ability, our capacity to be compassionate is us. It starts with us, like our own mess, our own inner work. And so this is what I'm actually going to focus on today is the inner work. What happens inside us that allows us to have the capacity to be there for others? Okay, so let's get started. I found myself on stage and I was frozen. It's the company all hands meeting and I have a 17 minute slot and there's 300 people standing in front of me and there's another 10,000, you know, online somewhere else. And the CEO has just announced me, he's handed me the clicker and I'm looking at the lights, I say my name and then I have no idea why I'm there. I had done the homework. I'd come the day before. You know, I'd stood on stage, I practiced, I saw the lights. I was cool as a cucumber. I'm making jokes with the comms team. Like, this is what I do. Why am I frozen? And it's not like that my mind had, didn't have any thoughts. It, the problem was it had 25 thoughts all at once. And the loudest one was, wow, ah, why is this happening right now? My lizard brain had taken over. And so instinctively, I took a deep breath. I went, <gasps> in front of 10,000 people. And as soon as I did, the lights came, my lights came back on and I was fine, 17 minutes. And when it was all done after the company meeting, you know, my friends were joking around, we were high five and they're like, wow, that was so cool how you demonstrated taking a deep breath and like resetting and centering yourself. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that was cool. It was only two or three seconds, but it felt like a lifetime. Now, what's going on in our minds when this happens? Well, look, on this journey to compassion, the first step is to know ourselves and to know ourselves deeply. First, we have a story to tell. Each one of us have a unique story. But another piece of it is what is going on in our minds and our bodies? Because often what's going on in our minds and our bodies is distracting us. And that gets in the way of being helpful for someone else gets in the way of our own service. We have this tiny almond shape. In fact, there are two of them, amygdala. And you probably know, they are constantly searching for danger, right? And that was great a million years ago. If a stick snapped in the woods, our bodies are flooded with adrenaline and cortisol, the stress hormones. We are ready to fight. We are ready to run. 
And unfortunately, it happens exactly the same way now. We've evolved this way, right? Except now it's the angry email from a customer or it's the kids in the next room screaming while we're trying to do a Zoom call. Maybe it's us screaming at ourselves while we're trying to do a Zoom call. But our amygdalas are always looking for danger. And because of that, you know, what happens is we're in this fight or flight situation way more than is helpful in our daily lives. Just like me, frozen on stage, it happens in other ways too. We get upset. And when we get upset, that lizard brain takes over and the prefrontal cortex, which is that deep thinking part of our brain, it's not that it goes quiet, it's just that it can't be heard. It's like our kids tugging at our leg when we're trying to do a really important email. It's really hard to focus with our amygdalas looking for danger all the time. So this first part about knowing ourselves is knowing how to regulate, how to calm down that lizard brain. Now, this is not a class on meditation, although I do those too. You can follow me in other places and come to my sessions. But when we breathe and take and breathe on purpose, it really helps. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take three breaths together, yeah? And you can have your eyes open or closed, either way is fine. Let's try it. So take a deep breath in and then all the way out. Take another deep breath in and let your body fully relax on the exhale all the way out. And one more deep breath in, allowing everything to just let go.